Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, this one's going to be about Donald Trump again. Okay, so we had um, a video, uh, my last video, I've lost track now, um, that talked a little bit about uh, how he's going to do in his court cases. But I want to focus now on the emoluments, which sounds like something you rub all over yourself. But actually, it's um, uh, money or payment or benefit that a president's not allowed to take uh, while he's in office. And uh, so it's exactly the thing that the uh, the the GOP has tried to pin on Biden, saying that uh, everything that happened with his son Hunter somehow benefited uh, President Biden. However, Biden, the, all that happened while Biden was not president, and um, and there's, they've not been able to show that he's benefited in any way at all from that. However, while Trump was president, uh, he uh, had all sorts of foreign uh, powers, especially China, uh, paying money, staying in, renting most of his um, hotels uh, in uh, D.C. and in New York, and I believe in other locations too. Uh, to the tune of uh, almost $8 million they've uh, determined so far. So emoluments. That's what we're going to talk about today. President Donald Trump, I hate saying that, uh, is he going to get caught up and, um, in this emoluments uh, investigation? Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's talk about Trump and see how this uh, goes for him. Um, so the emoluments situation with Trump. As it turns out, everything that he has accused Biden of is in fact what he's been doing. And it's always like that with him. All of the, the situations that uh, when, he's, when he starts to accuse others of something, you can bet that he's uh, projecting his crimes onto someone else. And a, as, as diabolically um, clever as he is, this is this one tell, like a poker tell, that he can't hide. He can't, he can't keep himself from accusing other people of doing what he himself is doing. Um, it's kind of like, in my opinion, you know, the husband who's cheating on his uh, uh, spouse, cheating on his wife, and then uh, he keeps accusing her of cheating on him because I think in, in their brain they're thinking, well, if I'm doing it, she must be doing it. And so that's what Trump is. When he says there's no way that people aren't uh, doing all these things that he's been doing, it's because he knows because how he needs to do them because he's been doing them. So we'll do just a quick draw. I'm still trying to get into the swing of things um, of making the videos again. Um, so bear with me uh, for, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, but uh, I will keep trying to get these out on Wednesdays and Saturdays just like I used to. So, Donald Trump emoluments. How is that going to come out here? Yeah, before we do too much, Monuments. Is Trump going to get caught up in that? How bad is it going to be, I guess? So the first few things, let's do just a, a we'll do a few three-card draws. Okay, is, let's say, we'll say that question first. Is Trump going to get caught up in the emoluments um, part of this whole thing? Three cards. One, two, and three. Trump. Monuments, are they going to prove it? First card. Okay, the Knight of Cups. So what's interesting about the, the, the Knight of Cups is that this is the fellow who's going to fight uh, for uh, his remit. Okay, Cups are emotional situations, heartfelt. And uh, so this Knight is uh, just about ready to cross that emotional river, holding on 
his cup of um, an emotional situation. Um, is this Trump? Is this uh, prosecution? Is this the United States? Let's see. Next card. Will Trump get caught up in the emoluments? as well? I believe what we've got going here is the uh, current government uh, building the case against Trump because this uh, wand, wands are action plans for a movement. And this great big offer of an ace of wands means that there's a very fruitful action about to take place. And the last card is the world card. And so the world card is beginnings and endings and it's a major arcana card. So what these three cards are telling me, these are being uh, representing um, the government. Um, so yeah, the government is going to fight for this heartfelt situation of defending uh, the Constitution of which emoluments um, uh, is part of. Uh, you can't uh, benefit from the presidency. They have a plan, a big plan, fruitful plan, and it's going to be the end of one thing and the beginning of something else. And I have to say it has to be the beginning of the end for probably Trump in this regard. Now, let's see what else we can say about emoluments. Well, let's ask uh, if um, this is going to be uh, one of the major issues that prevents him from running for president running for president. Will this emolument situation be one of the things that prevents Trump from actually running for president? Let's see how that works out. Will the emoluments uh, investigation, which is just completed by um, a special committee, I guess it was, uh, is that going to be something, is this, is this going to keep him from, from taking office? Three cards, one, two, three, or maybe even running. Well, let's just see how the cards read this for him. Emoluments. First card. Okay, that one, the ones that we had in the previous reading, now we've got a page of one. Now, the thing about the page is that he's the very weakest uh, representation uh, of the royal court. You've got the king, the queen, the jack, and then, of course, the page. What the page can do, he can only bring a message to the court. Okay, it, it, he's got this message right here. He's saying, this is what I've got, and maybe you can do something with it. So again, I think this is bringing this issue to light. King of Swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. The King of Swords is the one who's, who's going to enforce his, um, uh, his truth, justice, rules, and law. And then the last one is victory victory on the part of the government. So yeah, so the question has come up about the monuments. There's a, a, an action about to happen. The truth, justice, rules and law, rules and law are going to reign and be victorious. But it didn't really answer specifically if that's what's going to keep him out of the Oval Office again. I want to know, is Trump even going to run? Is he even going to be able to run uh, in the primary as the Republican uh, pick for a presidential candidate? Will Trump even be able to run as the Republican candidate? Will he even run as a the Republican candidate? One, two. Okay, will he even run as a Republican candidate? First card. Oh, so this is interesting. So this is the Ten of Pentacles. Pentacles are uh, familial wealth, generational value. Will he run as the GOP candidate? Oh, the hangman, looking at things from another perspective and deals being made. You know, it looks like somehow through his familiar connections, for his familial um, value, whatever that might be in this regard, uh, causes some people to look at this in another way and some sort of a deal is made. I've always said that I think somehow Trump is going to be able to make some kind of a deal to keep him out of trouble. Um, but this didn't answer my question about is he going to run on the GOP side 
I don't really see that answer here, so we're going to ask it again. Is Trump going to be the one to run for the Republican Party for president? Is Trump going to be the one to run for the Republican Party for president? It's a battle. He's the star, and the abuse of power is going to come up again. So this is the five of swords. So again, um, actions, plans, forward, movement. This is Trump. He's fighting a battle. Lots of issues coming up against him. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he's just got this one uh, protection he can use. This fellow, you notice that he's got one uh, shoe on. He's got one just stocking foot here. So he's on a, a poor footing. But the fact is that he is the star, that he's got this this momentum behind him. However, his abuse of power, I think in regards to these emoluments, is what's going to keep him, uh, what's going to uh, cause him a problem. So I think somehow he's going to make a deal to, as part of saving himself uh, in, this, uh, in this regard. That's how I'm going to read that. I hope that was interesting for you. Listen, I promise you these videos are going to get better as I uh, get back into the swing of things. Uh, I'll be able to do a little more research and dedicate more time to getting these questions answered for you. And plus, I have not forgotten about those of you who ask questions, and they're coming up. I just have to uh, get uh, everything in order, and then I'll be able to work on the questions that you've asked. So please hang in there, and thank you very much. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the uh, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person, Wise, has had their input into it. And uh, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box... I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks. It's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific... A synopsis of uh, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about author weight and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic uh, theory and history of all of that. Um, it, it's, uh, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about, about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the, the cards. So... I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth-shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny. And um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close-up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems, and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in the typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. <laughs>